guys it's your boy John and we're back again with another video today we're going to be taking a look at the join head unit this is going to be a walkthrough of all its applications its settings and just some features that you might not know about and then if you were planning to purchase this this would be a great video for you now first let's start with the cold boot Now this car hasn't been on since yesterday and obviously you just saw it boot and it was very fast. It was actually not a cold boot, it was just a boot from start, uh, from warm basically. It goes into sleep mode and this is probably what you're going to be witnessing every day uh, if you're driving every week or you know every day. That's going to boot like that super fast and super responsive. Alright so the 10 inch join is looking fantastic. The screen is super bright. And I adjusted my camera settings so you can kind of see uh, how dark everything else is. But this right here is lit up pretty well. But notice how the bright just drowns out everything. Um, it's a very nice IPS screen. Colors are vibrant. Resolution is what I expect from a large screen with a, uh, by joining. They, you don't really see the pixels from where you sit in your car. It's perfect. I think it's a really good balance between performance and... Um, this overall look now um, this is their home menu notice that the, you have like your tray right here and then you have more apps so see here are some of the apps now that goes into the response time and also refresh rate so it's it's very smooth um, 60 FPS looks good to me it looks very like just buttery smooth now I know the camera shooting at 24 frames per second so you won't be able to get this in this YouTube video but just trust me it's smooth um, now the touch responsiveness it's very f fast and accurate um, it's the screen itself is when you remove the a little like screen protector I need to clean it a little bit but it does have it's a little bit grippier than your phone that has like an obeophobic layer so it doesn't so it's a little bit more grabby. Grabby means when you have your finger and you're, you're brushing along. It's not like a baby's butt, if you know what I mean. It's just like, it's like, a, it, it's a kind of like a window, like a glass window. All right, so let's go back to the home menu. You probably noticed some of the, um, you noticed the little circle-y thing. This is basically, um, oops, didn't even click it. This is like a shortcut menu where you can go home app settings common accelerate this will usually appear always on top you can turn this off if you wanted um i just leave it on because this screen has very narrow bezels up top even right here these could be a little bit thinner but just trust me compared to the competition join has really thin bezels and this allows it to have um your home button and stuff like that when you have things full screen Sometimes, so like this bar right here does go away, but you'll still have this up. And I'll demonstrate that when we get to like Android Auto, where you're like, okay, how do I go to home and stuff like that. Okay, so we have Bluetooth music, which is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just show you it's how it looks like. I have my phone cooked up, uh, hooked up today, uh, right now. So my phone's hooked up. You can call people. You can look at your contacts, your recent, set your device name. So you can say this is like... Uh, my car or you know Honda Civic you can just put your name so every time you're Bluetooth it shows Honda Civic or something like that and then this is to link it up which is pair the next app is the video player app now I don't use this video player app too much but there's a lot of internal storage I can see the use of if you put some Disney movies or you know you're on a road trip or something like that or you like to sit in your car and just watch the movies this display is really nice and I think it would be a good fit for that overall Next off, we have settings, which I'm going to go to after because that's a little bit more extensive. Music player makes sense. Now, when you're playing music in this car, she has <laughs> uh, it's going to get everything from the file directory. So you can get a USB drive and put it into your USB. Let me show you a USB. So I have a USB connector. They actually comes with two. Just basically, there's a wire. You can plug in a USB thumb drive or hard drive or you know one of those remote ssds you can plug it in listen to a bunch of your music watch watch a bunch of your um 
your movies too. So it's pretty pretty good. Now I used to have a cracked Pandora. So if you don't know what Pandora it is, Pandora is like a radio station similar to Spotify and YouTube Music. And you can give it a thumbs up or give, give it a thumbs down depending on like what music you like. And that Pandora station, actually the cracked one at least, allows you to download your song then and there. So it's really nice if you have that Pandora app. You have the Pandora app open, you, you hit thumbs up, it downloads it locally. So then you don't have to, if you want to listen to it and you don't have like internet or something like that, you can do that. So it's a cool, cool fit. File manager is just like your file manager in your uh, your desktop or your computer shows all your folders your um yeah fo folders and files which is nice uh apple doesn't have that which is weird but it's good to you know organize your stuff or arrange it in a certain way so we also have calculator which is i don't know how useful it is i guess if you're at a drive through or something like that you need to crunch the numbers obviously i actually crunch the numbers right here so I guess there is some use like that. It's, I mean, remember this is a very Android-like experience. So maybe I should just focus more on the car aspect. So we got the this little navigation thing right here. You can specify what radio, uh, not radio, but what app you want to use for GPS. So think about like, do you want to use Waze, Google Maps, you know, TomTom, Tom, uh, Garmin, and stuff like that. You can set that up. I personally use just my phone's GPS um, using CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's how I do it. I don't really mess with this. But it's there if your phone's dead or stuff like that. Now this is the radio app. I'll just show you guys how it looks like. Whew. Yeah, this doesn't sound too good right now. Um, I'm in my, uh, my garage, so I don't have that good signal, and I'm on, in an older car, which has a weaker antenna. But um, this is how the radio looks like. You can set presets. These are scanning, and you can... I actually don't know what this little thing is here. And this is AM, FM. But yeah, it, uh, the radio app itself, it looks really sharp and clean, and you can seek through it very fast by just dragging your finger like this. Um, so you'll be able to get to the station you want very easily. This is Bluetooth again. What's the difference between this one and this one, which I'll show you guys. So that's the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth music. Bluetooth music is just like a, how you, you tell your car that you want to listen to Bluetooth music. The Bluetooth app right here is basically setting up your phone and calls and contacts. So if you actually want to listen to music, you have to change your source to Bluetooth music. So let's say you're playing music here in this play right here, you want to switch it over to that. Now this is what I use the most. This is my go-to app. This car came, this car head unit came with something called CarLink. Now CarLink is good because um, I have everything on my phone uh, whether it comes to you know contacts gps you know if i was looking up directions i always you know look it on my phone so you can have several settings you could have it have it have android auto apple carplay and have it wireless now when i plug in my phone right here it's going to detect and then it's going to go into the um it happens pretty fast so i just connected it and boom so it's done Alright, so uh, just a little quick cut right there. Um, so this is like the, the maps right there. It's very smooth, very responsive. Text looks super clean, like sharp. Now I'm shooting this video at 4K, so you guys can definitely see that. Uh, you can probably even see the pixels because of the 4K sensor on this camera. But um, the resolution on the screen is so clear. Generally, when you're using... Um, like a car head unit from a, even a Lexus or Mercedes, their graphics and resolution so crunchy. You look at their you, their their map, it just doesn't look pleasant. Now with this, it's super sharp, and you wouldn't be able to um, be too sad here. And then look at this right here. I mean, this is just it just says Vovisto AC, you know. 
and the blacks look nice the white looks good the greens look good the resolution is clear this is an example of how i feel like android head units just evolve over pioneer and kenwood and you know those displays something about them like even on their higher ones they just look so dated i mean just look at this and then just compare that to this doesn't even have any graphics right compare that to you know a pioneer Oh, I don't know. Those those things suck. Even though it says either high, the the thousand dollar head units I bought that was 720p, it looked like garbage, man. It, I'm, it's just it was bad. But anyways, I digress. So if you wanted to go to your other apps and stuff like that, you can go here and then click on these stuff like that. So cool, a lot of cool stuff right there. You can check out the weather, the map, Spotify, play music. It's all it's all there, and it'd be very similar if you had an Apple iPhone. Uh, you have the Apple CarPlay, which I think the Apple CarPlay is really nice too. You know, you can text and stuff like that through voice, through Siri. It's all there. Now, um, you can either use this go to home, which I don't really do. What I do is I drag down and I bring down the uh, the notification bar or the toolbar, and you can change your sound through here. By clicking it, you can, you can click your sound through here. But notice that the operations isn't that easy because you have to drag down. Go here, so you drag down, and then you can kind of see music and stuff like that. Now, there's no buttons right here. It makes you have to add. It adds another complexity and another step to change songs. And uh, if you want to go home, you can click right there, so you're back home. So it's like a more two, instead of pressing one button, it's a swipe down and then a click. Swipe down and then a click to get out of that full screen mode. All right, so that shows the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto side. Next off is, let's just go through the app list again. Aux is exactly how it sounds. On the back of the head unit, you, there's an, um, an RCA to aux so if you want to have that capability or if your phone uh not your phone but your car and phone have the aux port you can uh, connect it there so this used to be super useful not as useful as it used to be because no phones really have headphone jacks anymore uh, we went, went through all these chrome is a web browser and then um control let me show you what control is so control is if you wanted to use your um steering wheel controls now this car is a little bit older so i don't have any steering wheel controls onto this um onto this vehicle so i won't be able to map anything but there's ways where you can you know map it if you want if you wanted to steering wheel controls you can buy like an accessory uh, i don't really need it it's nice to have but looks wise i like it like more simple and clean easy connect is a mirroring um mirroring application so if you wanted to have your phone mirror onto the display you can do that um i i actually prefer to just use android auto and apple carplay yeah it's a little bit more dumbed down but if you want to basically use your phone phone like everything on your phone onto here it's possible but at that point why don't you just hot spot it you know you know if you hot spot it you basically have um better features on here all right, so EQ is your equalizer. Um, you got your file manager. We talked about gallery. Google is more like your voice assistant. Now this is called um, uh, iGo. It's that's your navigation app that comes with your thing. I don't want to show it off because it's just a GPS app. Same with Maps, Music Player. Um, we talked about that. Navi is just a shortcut to open any of your things. Operation Guide is your manual. Uh, you can kind of see how it looks right here. Just go over real quick. Play Store is, to, is really good. That's where you can download any app. You want to download Pokemon Go. You want to download, you know, Snapchat or whatever. You, you can download a lot of stuff there. Radio, we talked about. Touch Assistant is that little ball. I actually don't really like it, so I'm actually going to get rid of it. Boom. So now it's a lot cleaner. doesn't have that little annoying little thing. Video Player, Voice Search, YouTube. And then when you have your widgets so you can put on your thing. So that's about it for the app's uh, default. Um, let's go over settings real quick because that's really important. This thing is equipped with Wi-Fi. That's the only thing you really need to know about. 
display you can adjust the brightness level and also when it turns uh, auto black screen is turns this uh, display off after a while which is very nice you can do your wallpaper your brightness levels so there's two brightness levels one when it's um, um, when you don't have your headlights on and when you have your headlights on yeah, how dark you want it so I have it all the way dark Oh yeah, and also display net switch it just shows you the data you're using, which uh, I just leave it off because it's unnecessary data. So then we got more sa sound. You have your key tone, which is the little beep sound if you want to have it that loud. Makes it like you know it's sim similar to all the audio systems. It then cranks it up, gives it more juice. Amp on and amp off. So there's an amp switch on the back. I believe it's blue, a blue wire, not a switch, but a wire, and you can turn it on or off. Now, I don't have the amp wired with the, the amp on. Air conditioning, I don't have, subwoofer, um, that's if you want to have those settings right there. And then here's the EQ again. I guess I didn't show you the EQ, but that was the EQ settings we were looking at. A lot of adjustments because this is a DSP unit, and all these are just way too crazy for me so I'm not, I'm not that big into audio I like good sounding audio but um, tuning audio I might you know adjust the EQ but doing like spatial time and all that I I don't I'm not familiar with it now we got general here's just the settings if you guys were interested navigation now so that I haven't said it but that's when you hit that navigation button and bada bing bada boom factory password which I'll show you guys in a bit users very similar to a car you can also delay the power off when AC is off um, we can do like 10 seconds so basically when you turn your car off it still stays on for 10 more seconds uh, then date time accessibilities develop our options and about device all very similar to how you would have it on your phone uh, about device is a little bit different because it has a uh, different processors and stuff so the joining is using an Android 10 and uh, here are all the specs we got the 8 core 1.8 gigahertz 64 storage Bluetooth version and all that stuff so let me just tell you about the performance there's no issues so like you don't really have to worry about anything like when it comes to chugging and stuff these this thing is quick and fast it's snappy it's good so lastly is the factory settings now this is, allows you to do more technical stuff like change that boot logo, logo and radio stuff so I'll show you the password it's 3368 that goes in right here you can do a touch calibration original car agreement protocol so a lot of stuff can mess it up so just there's no keep that in mind here's antenna normally on which is kind of important if you have like a car like mine where the antenna actually raises up old school so if you mess with this stuff too much you gotta definitely know what you're talking about panel key learning is generally like the hot keys if this thing actually had buttons which it doesn't so oh, go back in touch coloration panel learning front view cameras so a lot of more this is how you can upgrade it single 360 a lot of more cool functions but uh, it's all there if you if you needed it so that kind of concludes the join walkthrough. I'm very happy with this unit. I've been using it for about two, three weeks. I actually have an install video um, that I haven't posted up, so stay tuned for that if you guys were looking for uh, that. But I know a lot of people were more interested in just show me the app, show me the walkthrough of it. So thank you guys for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.